I'm Vinod. I'm uh, an application developer working with ThoughtWorks for the past six years. Also uh, develop as an agile coach and help with uh, lots of teams to build their teams from scratch. And my day-to-day -day way, uh, work involves coding as well as coaching new people coming onto the team. So that's how it is. What am I here for is uh, to just share some of the experience I've learned, uh, coaching some uh, large teams and also uh, building some teams from scratch. Uh, so let's start with this imaginary story. Let's say a new government takes over some country and uh, they have a charismatic leader and that leader wants to make this uh, country very successful like any other developed nation. And he looks at uh, various developed nations profile and then he says, okay, maybe uh, we should be uh, good enough in sports then people will start noticing us. So he calls his uh, office and then says, fine, what should we do and which sport we should excel? And his office says, what if we win a, a football world cup, you see? FIFA Cup is one of the most widely watched and we need uh, all the teams to win that one. So let's go uh, win it. But uh, he says like our country doesn't have any football culture and how can we actually make it win this one? It's very difficult, it's like no football, nothing. And what people say is like, okay, let's hire the best coaches in town or in the world, go anywhere, pay them all the money that they can't refuse and then bring them to coach our people. So they go to the likes of Pele, Maradona, these guys and one of their managers uh, looks at this and says, hey, these guys are go, uh, giving us a pretty good money, you shouldn't refuse. It looks like a short training, just go and do it. So yes, fine, they convince a coach and then the coach joins in. And the coach is given a very uh, two-week intensive training uh, regimen, like you have to train our people in these two weeks. And uh, the coach says, okay, uh, it's very difficult, uh, I'm not able to do it and he discusses with the manager and the manager says, Forget it, man, two weeks, good million, uh, million dollars of money, get it done and keep coming back so that we can concentrate on our football. So this guy says, okay, hire, hire the uh, football field, uh, get them all the training gear, good shoes, and let's start at 6 a.m. from the coming day. Uh, immediately, the prime minister's office steps in and say, we already spent too much money on you guys. Uh, we'll get you 10 foosball tables. All we want is, we want your knowledge, Share your knowledge and your experience with our team. Our team should get inspired from you, but it's okay, they learn football on their own. And okay, this training was done two weeks later. Uh, what the Prime Minister feels is like, there's a FIFA conference going in, send all our team to the football conference, and uh, they'll meet a lot of great footballers, share all the ideas from them. All that is done, everything was prepared. The team looks all fine, very, very much prepped up. So the office gives a quote saying that, we are enabled or we are transformed or we are adopted football. And with that, uh, it's a check mark done. And what the, uh, before the qualifier round starts, the prime minister himself personally comes, gives a very good pep talk, prepares and motivates people, and then puts them onto the field. Uh, they do go in with a lot of motivation and try to win the cup, but they end up coming uh, knocked out. And they will not uh, fare well at all and it is like, it's, it's not, it did not go anywhere. And why I'm sharing this story is, this is the typical agile adoption story, which the first few experiences I had when uh, I had to go and talk to the clients. I'll be given, I'll be called in to go come and help the team, but we'll be given a very standard regimen like, please do so and so and things, and you have a two weeks thing to do, and then we want results at the end of the two weeks. So that's how it gets started. So my talk is more uh, centered around because I started with the football analogy, let's say if a country wants to succeed in football, it's not going to be in a very short frame of time and not going to be in this kind of way, right? Similar to building any uh, good agile teams, or I'll say not even agile teams, it's any software development teams, I would say. So what was missing in the first thing was uh, vision itself. And uh, nobody wanted to know why this transformation was running, and it was more likely that agile enablement was their key goal at, at the end of this. Uh, transformation. It was not something like uh, they'll not be able to tell you uh, what do they want, what are the end goals. It's not something like, okay, from uh, the concept level, I wanted to send it to production within three weeks. I want to get a revenue out of it in three weeks. Instead, what we will usually get is, can you help and come, uh, come to my team, te teach them how to write stories, teach them how to run stand-ups, or can you train some scrum masters for me? Do you know how to uh, cut down my release plan into sprints? 
and I don't know why all of these starts with yes, but uh, that's why I think it uh, relates very much to success. So people have all these yes words to uh, come and tell us for what do they want to. And uh, many of them, what happens is after they give us, uh, they also try to influence the plan so much and then give a measure of success uh, in terms of the metrics, like the unit test score should be 100%, those kind of metrics comes in. But you look at football games, right? The measure of success is nothing but you win the game or you don't win. It's not something like this guy passed a really good long pass, so this guy, this goalkeeper keep, kept on uh, defending it, but it's not the end of it, right? It's more likely whether you won or not, and that's how it is for the software teams. Are you able to send it to production on the time you thought you can go? That is what it is all about. Uh, in terms of facilities, uh, facilities uh, is a very touchy subject in many places, uh, especially in large enterprises. What happens is uh, people don't get the right hardware. Uh, most of the hardware we actually encounter to get into is uh, pretty old, like two, three years uh, at least old. And hardware, sometimes it happens to be that, ask any developer, the hardware actually matters to them. So in hardware terms, our, uh, evolution is about like two to three years. Every two to three years, you get a new generation of hardware. And if your replacement policy is three to four years, you're already out of that game. And good hardware is not a luxury at all. It's as good as a good quality shoes for a footballer. It's the same as for a software developer. Next, degree of autonomy in allowing the coaches or the experts to handle the issues. Most of them like to try to bring in uh, their own ideas. This is more like uh, advanced beginner, which I read in one of the blogs, where somebody learns to uh, do bowling. Uh, they try to do just throw the ball into the lane or uh, do it all their own way. Uh, they'll have a really actually good progress. From 20s to 30s to 160s, they'll hit. But the maximum score you can hit in uh, bowling is 300. But people will max out around 160, 150. And that illusion is called advanced beginner. People know, think that they know lots of things very well. They uh, do it by their own knowledge and personal research, but won't do it the right way from professionals. So what happens is people try to bring in their own standardizations and customizations way too soon. They'll get into the way of saying like, OK, OK, you, you, the kind of stories you try to bring in is way too granular. Our guys will not understand this one. Or when you bring in unit testing, come on, don't bog into the bog the developers down. They don't like to unit test. Leave them alone. So this is the things which will uh, start hurting us really very bad when to it. Uh, somebody told me that if you don't have anything in Japanese, people won't actually adopt it. That's the only reason we have this one. Uh, but on other note, uh, it's more likely that if you wanted to uh, do something, this is the martial arts term used to learn something new. You first have to imitate somebody doing it, because if you want to learn, then try to introduce a small variation and learn from it. After you've done that variation and notice something about it, then introduce your own uh, methods to it. That's Shu Ha Ri, and the Ri is the master. Uh, most of the places where you do is, we introduce the Shu part and ask them to do it. They want to jump to the master in the uh, very next day. Uh, that's how it happens. Uh, trainings. Trainings, typical trainings we had always seen is uh, mostly certifications. And certifications are not training and they're not actually solving the purpose. It's more likely that certified football defender, certified midfielder, certified lineman, something like that sort it is. It's not going to solve any of the purpose. What is the real training you want to do is called bicycle skills. What if uh, I have a bicycle and I have to go to the store every day and I have a very limited amount of time to pick up something and come back. I'm every day faced with the choice of either learning to bicycle and quickly finish this task in one, uh, one, uh, one minute or two minutes from the next day onwards, or every day use the 10 minutes only to buy these things. You keep postponing these bicycle skills. You'll have to identify these things and bring them as part of training to bring it as an investment, and from next day onwards, you're going to reduce it. But certifications, are more likely to give you how to ride a bicycle, all videos and all in books, but it's not going to teach you how to learn that bicycle. That's how it is. Team composition, uh, where lots of teams uh, we see uh, the experience mix, mix is not so very good when you bring in developers. Uh, lots of developers actually uh, get, you have uh, different stages of brain evolution as well, I think. 
uh, from 20s to 30s, you learn a lot, and from 30 onwards, that maturity also creeps in. And by that time, lots of people become non-coding architects, and they move out. What happens is, is uh, lots of uh, rookies or the new people who come in, they're not able to uh, learn from them because the architects are no longer coding. This is very much like, uh, will you actually have your own, you take it in the India cricket team, you don't have just Mahindra Singh Dhoni and 10 new people coming into the team and playing a match, right? It will be a mix of people and that's how we want to structure it. And that uh, diversity and expertise mixture should always be there. And uh, this will be the most key component to have. And when I said that architects should code, what will happen is there will be some kind of a resistance when people had moved on beyond some certain level. They wanted to come back and see coding as a different kind of an activity or not for their kind of people. So uh, there uh, relies a challenge where uh, we need to identify people who want to stay technical and who are actually having that aptitude also to remain in that field to promote that as also as a career path to them in the company. So after a point, it should not stop as uh, after six years or so, we should not stop having a technical path itself. That's what it is. This is the only thing I differ from a sports team is I, I am the one who believes there should be uh, no man of the match awards. Uh, the reason is, in a team setup, it's always because of the team effort, somebody else's effort would actually look at very uh, look very big. And if you try to reward someone's uh, output, or so, because it seemingly comes from someone else, uh, two things will happen. One person, the person receiving the award will surely get motivated, but the ones who think it was because of their job, they'll never ever feel that it's, it, it'll motivate, and then it, it's like on a downward spiral. And uh, next thing is, uh, the biggest thing is the time scale. Uh, anything uh, we see, uh, we, we are not changing some uh, process out here, like you chain these knobs and it starts working. It's not uh, the way it works. Uh, we are asking for uh, people to look at cultural change, right? And cultural change involves people. People change is not so easy. It's going to take a long time. But people looking for results, metrics in terms of uh, financial numbers, so-called 90-day dash, every quarter you need to present something. I would say this will not be so very easy to present unless uh, there is already an established team and you do some minor variations and you want to see, you can see it. But if you are setting it for the first time, there is no way you can actually get to know something very soon. What I'm saying is, it is something of in the order of months and years, not in days and weeks. In case you want to build your team really well, and you want to keep it going on, you should always think in months and years, so that, and you also need to persist, because first time you try it, it actually uh, shows that it's about to go down because of all the new things we are introducing, but it'll stabilize after only a while. And that's, that chasm people have to learn to cross. If they don't do, uh, most of them uh, quit just at the right time when they are going to about to harvest the benefits they've invested. So that is the persistence part of it. Uh, recap, we, are talk we talked about vision and ownership. There should be somebody thinking of what the end goal is, and that person has to be there throughout. Uh, understand that it's not uh, very easy nowadays that to retain talent for such a long time. There has to be ways to actually track it and uh, as an office or an, as a company that should be propagated across individuals. A new person should not come and start everything from the beginning. Facilities are not luxury. If you think that hardware is needed, the policy should change and policy should accept new hardware should come in. Trainings, again, certifications are not training. We are not able to gain anything out of training. Shoe, Hari, imitate. If, any, uh, if you're bringing in a coach, try to imitate what the coach tries to do. Introduce your variations after you learn to imitate it, and then bring in your, your own innovations. Give some bit of an autonomy to the coach. Uh, there would be some resistance to change from senior members. L use guided mastery to let them ad adapt to uh, the new changes and make them feel safer, and <coughs> uh, also create a technical path for people further uh, beyond six or seven years. Uh, time scale. Yes, definitely it's going to take a lot of time. It's not going to be a quick win. You'll have to persist and also make sure that you're not having any superstars in the team or at least just treat everyone as superstars in the team. That's it.
Thanks. I'm, I blog at vinodkumar at wordpress.com and many of my uh, blog entries are related to these kind of topics and looking forward to meet you all. Any questions you have? So what is, how do you divide your time? Uh, so I don't uh, divide my, so the question is how do I do both uh, development and coach? Uh, there are assignments I keep uh, switching back between uh, development as well as coaching. And there are some of my friends here whom I work with them as coaches. And right now I'm a developer.